In this video, I am going to show what I am working on right now, talk about the reasons why I did not publish any videos the last few weeks, and give you an update on what to expect on the IOTT channel in 2025. Hello everyone and welcome to the IOTT channel. First, a Happy New Year to you and your family and all the best wishes. May the coming year be filled for you with events and activities that create value in your life and relationships. A special welcome goes out to all new subscribers and of course, welcome back to everyone else. I'm happy you made it here and thank you for your ongoing support of my channel. In videos number 146 and 47, I explained my broader vision of doing train localization using a train site distance sensor and getting rid of a large number of track site sensors like block detectors. Part of that work is coming up with a locomotive decoder that has an onboard distance sensor that can be used to measure the travel distance as well as the speed of the locomotive. Of course, the next logical step then is to not only measure the speed of the locomotive, but also to control it so that it would be possible to select a speed step on the handheld throttle and know exactly what scale speed the locomotive is going, independent of the grade, the number of cars in the train and the track voltage. While thinking about that concept, it dawned on me that the very same could be implemented using a combination of a standard DCC decoder and a car equipped with a purple head sensor, as long as the purple head has a mode where it can not only measure, but also set the speed of the locomotive pulling the train. So I started to develop a new mode for the purple head sensor, which is called co-pilot mode. It has its own subtab in the purple head and here is how it works. On the co-pilot page, you can set the address you want to use to control the locomotive. Then you create a throttle profile, which defines what throttle speed step should result in what scale speed. Finally, you tell the stick the DCC address the locomotive decoder is set to. That's it. After activating the co-pilot mode, the stick is listening to speed commands on the control address. It then looks up the scale speed the locomotive should be set to and compares it with the measured speed from the purple head sensor. If it is too low, it increases the speed settings of the locomotive's DCC address and on the other hand, if the locomotive is going too fast, it is slowing it down by sending a lower speed command to the locomotive's DCC address. This adjustment is repeated frequently, so the locomotive can react to changing grades, curves or different track voltages and maintain a steady scale speed. On the downside, of course, each locomotive is using two DCC addresses, one to set the speed and the other to control the locomotive. This is due to the fact that the purple head speed sensor is outside of the locomotive and I need a way to communicate the settings to the locomotive decoder. Once I use a decoder with onboard speed measurement, only a single DCC address will be needed. On the other hand, the setup is a nice workaround for smaller scales in case it is not possible to miniaturize a decoder with speed measurement to fit into the locomotive. Just add a purple head core into the train and it can maintain a defined and controlled scale speed. Sounds like an interesting option to me. At this time, I am close to release a new version of the IOTT stick software that includes this new co-pilot feature, along with some bug fixes. I currently expect to have it ready sometimes later this month and I plan on doing a video explaining the new features in more detail. 
Now, in case you wonder why it took so long to work on this new version and why there were no videos in the last two months, here is why. First, I was running into some technical difficulties with the implementation. The Copilot is a new concept with communication going back and forth between the IoT stick and the command station, and it was just a little more complex to implement than expected. Furthermore, I am still not done finishing my train shed, so I am using a somewhat temporary network infrastructure, which is not helpful either. Second, we had the election and I was not really happy with the outcome and it took me some time to analyze the consequences for the future. Some promises or better threats that were made during the campaign are not compatible at all with my understanding of a society based on the rule of law and an economic system that supports free trade and other economic liberties. So, I spent some efforts to identify for myself those campaign messages that, when implemented as promised, will make me to take action like shutting down the Tindy store or, in the worst case, moving to another country. We will see how things develop over the upcoming four years. Finally, I was running into some age-related health issues as I was developing a heart rhythm problem. My pulse rate was up in the 140s for three days, so I was admitted to the hospital in early December and had to stay there for almost a week. The problem is continuing on, somewhat under control, thanks to some pills, but I decided to slow down a little and take things easier. So, for the IOTT channel, that obviously means that I will reduce the number of videos I publish. In the past, I tried to have a new video out every two weeks. I don't know what the new rate will be, but I intend to publish a new video when I have some results to show. I still follow the development plan outlined in videos number 146 and 147, just slower. And I also intend to continue the turntable project shown in video number 149, which created a lot of interest. So, more to come, just less frequent and less predictable. Therefore, if you are not yet a subscriber to the IOTT channel, it certainly is a good idea to click the subscribe button right now and activate the notification function so that you will be notified whenever a new video comes out. For the upcoming months, I plan on redoing the myiott.org webpage so that there is more written documentation about the IOTT stick and the various boards and the QR codes on the PCBs will be functional again. I also need to work on some products, namely the DCC Ox Shield, which unfortunately has been out of stock for quite some time. I need to do a redesign as some of the parts used for the onboard DC-DC converter are no longer available. So plenty of things to do, but at a moderate pace only. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and it gave you some ideas what's coming next for the IOTT stick and the IOTT channel in general. And if you like this video and this type of content, please click the like button below to let me know. It is a quick and easy way to support my channel as it motivates YouTube to suggest this video to other model railroaders. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.